how often do you think about career development or do you just throw in your CV probably for a certain job application and you get the job probably you get caught for the interview and then you get the job and you're comfortable and you're okay. Good evening and thank you for joining us on Y254. My name is Patricia Morioki. Tonight we talk about career development. We just try to see when we talk about career development, what really do we mean? Are you so comfortable as you watch us tonight in a in your career that you'd not even realize that there is career stagnation? Probably for someone looking to change or to shift from one uh, industry to the other. How do you go about that? We're going to be covering that and much more tonight with Leah Muli, who is a career coach. She is a human resource consultant and she is a lecturer at Cooperative University. There's no better person to talk about career development, I believe, uh, than a career coach. Talk to us across our social media platforms. That is at Y254 channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. Thank you, Leah, for finding the time to be here tonight. And the first thing last week uh, we also had Leah we were talking about uh, setting goals as a new year probably people need to see back and probably try to reflect evaluate things that did not work out and put up new strategies uh, we mentioned something about career goals and I felt it would be right if we dedicated an entire session to just exhaust on career goals and career development and to start off I would like us to talk about um, career goals how can we as uh, Patricia right now, if I sit down and I probably want to have a vision board, for example, something that I have done for a very long time, how do I define career goals? What is it that I'm supposed to look at as I sit down and set my career goals? Uh, good evening and thank you for having me. You're welcome. When it comes to like well, planning your goals, mm -hmm. specifically when it comes to your career, mm -hmm. you've got to think about where do I want to be? Mm -hmm. Start even with a year from now mm -hmm. then where do I want to be five years from now mm -hmm. and once you you start to visualize yourself mm -hmm. a year from now do I want to be where I am now mm -hmm. do I want to be doing what I'm doing right now mm -hmm. it will make you think about things you want to change in the future all right and that's how you begin to uh, set your goals mm -hmm. like if I want to to change a job is it that I'm changing a job within the same industry mm -hmm. or I'm changing careers in totality, mm -hmm. going into, into a new uh, industry. Mm -hmm. For example, you want to change, you are in ICT, you want to go into uh, project management mm -hmm. or any other career that you want to change. So you need to be aware of, do I want to change a job from like, for example, from the organization I work for mm -hmm. to another organization or do I want to change in totality or am I looking to, to grow within the ladder within the same organization. Right. Maybe I was an accountant, I want to grow to become a senior accountant, or I want to grow, I'm aiming, maybe 10 years from now, I want to be in senior management. Mm -hmm. Maybe I want to be the CFO, if I may use the example of an accountant. Mm -hmm. So once it's clear in your mind where you're going, mm -hmm. then you start to plan. When uh, You have to be, like we said the other day, about smart goals, you yeah. have to be specific. Yeah. I'm aiming for CFO. Mm -hmm. So it must be time bound. Like, I want to be CFO in 10 years, mm -hmm. I want to be CFO in, in in seven years, I want to be, it must be very specific. Mm -hmm. So now, while you're still s setting your goal, you need to do uh, an evaluation of your skill sets and your competencies. Mm -hmm. Because with your current skills, you'll be able to know what does a CFO need? What skills does a CFO need? Mm -hmm. Do I have the competencies? What leadership skills does a CFO need? So when you do your evaluation of your current at, as is and where you want to go, then you see the gap. Okay. When you see the gap, then now you begin to plan, am I going to skill myself? Am I going to look for a mentor? Am I going, then your goal will be very specific. I'm looking for a mentor who is already a CFO mm -hmm. to work with me mm -hmm. and show me the ropes, how they have gotten there. All right. So it has to be specific. If you're changing careers also, where am I going? Who in that industry is an industry leader? Mm -hmm so that I can see what they have done before and emulate after them so that I can get there faster. You don't have to make the same mistakes that other people have made. Have made. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So when you talk about um, career goals, I believe that for a person at the entry level and mm -hmm. someone was being been um, probably uh, in the career or in a certain job for yeah. five or seven years, mm -hmm. these people are literally 
in different levels. Yeah. So how okay. now do we, de how does a person starting up distinguish uh, on how they're setting their goals? Cause, so that you don't go and start setting goals that probably mm -hmm. someone who has worked for 10 years mm -hmm. you know, is supposed to be setting. So how do these people evaluate uh, themselves on, in goal setting mm -hmm. based on the level where they are? Okay, what I would say is, every time, uh, whichever level you are in, in your career, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. There are those uh, things that limit you from going for what you want. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, when you're setting your goal, you might start thinking to myself, oh, I don't have a degree, and they want someone with a degree. Mm -hmm. And these are what people call mindset limiting beliefs. These are the things that you tell yourself or other people tell you about yourself that may be true or may not be true. Mm -hmm. For example, people tell, and now you begin to, uh, people tell you you need to have a master's. So you start chasing the master's. Yeah. Or you, you see a job, and or even you want to go somewhere, but you start imagining in your head, now I don't have a degree, I want to apply. Or they're asking for three years of experience, I have one, mm -hmm. I will not apply. So for wherever you are, you have to be aware of the limiting beliefs in your mind that stop you from planning goals that are, you know, I mean, if a goal is not making you uncomfortable, mm -hmm. then it shouldn't be worth your time. Okay, so as you said last time, dream big. Yes. <laughs> so if you're at entry level, mm -hmm. you can just begin to plan in terms of where do you want to be in the next three years? Mm -hmm. Because when you know where you're going, then you begin to, you begin to see how will I skill myself? Which organization do I want to go for? Remember you're at entry level. Yeah. You, 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 you must have an idea of which organization you want to work for. Which, and then how do you get an idea of what the, of the organization uh, you want to work for? Mm -hmm. It's by evaluating also your personal mm -hmm. values. Do I um, enjoy being praised for my achievement? Mm -hmm. Then you look for an organization that uh, recognizes people and acknowledges them. Do I want an organization that gives me work-life balance? Mm -hmm. So that you know, you must be clear in your mind whichever organization you want to work for. You are at entry level. Set your goals just knowing that my not having experience should not stop me from going for what I want. All right. So set a goal. If you want to work for a certain organization, begin to think, I don't have experience. Can I volunteer? Can I intern mm -hmm. to gain that experience that uh, I don't have? If you're at middle level, of course, now you've got an idea oh, of what happening. the industry yeah. looks like. So how do you set your goals at that level? Definitely your goals should be around accelerating your career. Your career. Mm -hmm. So how do, I, how do I accelerate my career? How do I skill myself and make myself an expert in my, mm -hmm. in my industry? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So at, at middle level, you're working towards making sure that you are growing your skills. You're becoming an expert in your field. All right. Yeah. Uh, we all know mm -hmm. um, no one is perfect. Yeah. Every person has strength and you have weaknesses. Yeah. So when you talk about career development, how do you now capitalize on your strength? Uh, what role does probably your strength um, mm -hmm. get to play in career development? Because I believe there are people who have certain strengths, but mm -hmm. they're kind of like not aware of that strength and how to capitalize it to benefit them. So how can someone watching us tonight and they feel they have a certain uh, strength, they have mm -hmm. uh, something that they believe they would offer. So how are they able to identify that and make sure that it works to benefit them in their career development? Okay. One easy way of knowing what exactly your strengths are mm -hmm. is if you're in, already in the workplace, mm -hmm. there is usually the annual um, performance management. During that meeting, even your boss will tell you, this: you're good at this. Mm -hmm. And even if another place where you can know what your strength is, is by asking your colleagues mm -hmm. your peers will be able to tell you like even in sometimes even in loose conversations you can hear hey, you, you're good at mm -hmm. you're good at that that's another way and the other way is by uh, some organization even ask your their customers uh, how was your experience how do you feel you know some evaluation is 360 they ask all stakeholders yeah. including your customers mm -hmm. that's another way and the other way is just by being aware of yourself mm -hmm. and how do you become aware by seeing what are these things that i do naturally that it would take somebody else more time. Mm -hmm. You know, there are those things when you're given that role, you, you'll say, I'll do that in my sleep, or it will take me uh, 30 minutes and the presentation will be ready. Yet for another person, they need a more week. time. Yeah, probably. So just knowing, you know, what is that thing, one thing that you, you just do um, with effortlessly, mm -hmm. or even if it's with effort, with minimal effort, effort that's how you know.
your strength. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we take a very, we'll be taking a very short break here on Y254. But when we come back, we try to look at job hoping. Have you even ever heard of that word before? And if you have, we're here to really try and break it down all for you. We take a very short break. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us on Y254 Updates. If you're just joining us tonight, we're talking about career development. Talk to us across our social media platforms. That is at Y254 Channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. So far, we've talked about setting career goals. We've also talked about understanding uh, one's strength. And I would like us to talk about uh, job hopping. And this is where you change uh, your career at least below two years probably since you started so I want us to look at it in a way that can that hurt your career because there are people uh, if you talk to them today they are here after six months they have moved after one year they have moved there might be opportunities here that are availing themselves and that is the reason as to why you're moving and probably the offer on that other side is better than the offer of the current uh, employment place that you are but how hurtful can that be to your career uh, uh, just recap, before we went on the break, mm -hmm. we were talking about strength. Mm -hmm. Let me just uh, add a point, then I'll go to job hoping. All right. Another way you can know your strength is how many, uh, I mean, the number of years of experience you have in an area. Mm -hmm. Of course, that gives you a strength because you've got field mm -hmm. uh, experience. Yeah. Then another the way that you can know what your strength is, is also like, you went to school for what? What did you study in university? Because it gives you you know, a deeper depth in terms of knowledge mm -hmm. um, than anybody else who hasn't done mm -hmm. that particular course. Right. Or, yes, so that is one way of identifying one's where, where your strength is. Mm -hmm. Experience, in terms of your education, in terms of the things, you know, gifts and talents that you've been naturally given. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, let's go to job hoping. Mm -hmm. Now, millennials are very well known for job, job hoping. hoping. What has happened is that people in the workplace have begun to understand how millennials work. So um, it can hurt you uh, if an organization is looking for, a, for someone to keep in a long-term position. Mm -hmm. Definitely when someone sees you're not a keeper, you just, you know, you just come into the organization and then you leave, mm -hmm. then um, definitely the organization might not want to invest in you. Because remember, recruit, recruitment takes a lot of money for yeah. the organization. Uh, by the time you, you settle in, it's time. Mm -hmm. And then before you deliver, you're out. Mm -hmm. So it does not add value for most organizations. Mm -hmm. It will hurt you if that organization, if that organization is looking for a position that is long term. Mm -hmm. But these days, organizations have also become clever in terms of dealing with uh, millennials. So what do, what do they do? They create jobs that are project-based. Mm -hmm. So you just come to the organization, you you have your deliverables, and millennials like to work like that. Mm -hmm. They come, you deliver your deliverables, and you're out of that place after okay. you have achieved. Mm -hmm. And it's win-win for both the employee Employ mm -hmm. and the employer, because you're here for a short time, we know you're here for two years, these are your deliverables, and then after that, you're you're out of the organization mm -hmm. or if there's a new project then they'll renew your project but job hoping most of the time more often than not it will hurt your career okay yeah. so now you've talked about um millennials and probably their way of doing things yeah. so for someone if i work for someone who has that the tendency of feeling that i want to work in into mm. a an organization yes. and they have a project which is going to last like one year mm. and probably there's going to be no renewal yeah how can such a person prepare themselves? Because I feel you might go in and you feel that this is how I want to do, this is how I want to work. Yeah. And the one year comes and it lapses yeah. and there is no any other project for you to work in that certain company. Yeah. And then there are no opportunities. Mm -hmm. It leaves you in a space where you, you're now back at the jobless pool, yeah. which we know as a country is so, so, so much crowded, especially by the young people. Mm -hmm. So how can young people watching us tonight probably what, why would you think uh what advice would you give them rather to choose from getting something that is at least long term mm -hmm. than just hoping and feeling like let me just work on this project for one year and then it gets to affect you later okay um it just depends also on your personality mm -hmm. and then uh, the other thing that i think is key for when you're a job seeker, mm -hmm. like, like I said, you need to evaluate yourself. Mm -hmm. What are my values? 
where what sort of organization do i want mm -hmm. to work for because now when it comes to searching then you will search for jobs in organizations that employ people on more long-term basis than mm -hmm. short-term basis mm -hmm. and then you begin also to groom yourself so that you're a good fit mm -hmm. for that organization that uh, that gives long ter longer term mm -hmm. jobs what uh, but based on our employment in this country it is very important for for you to be aware that in the short term while i'm looking if a short-term project comes I will take it oh, because right. it allows me to grow in terms of my skills. Mm -hmm. It allows me to, it reduces the gaps that I'm going to have in my resume for being in the job field, mm -hmm. uh, in the jobless, so, you know, being in the labor pool and un unemployed, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking for that kind of an organization, just keep looking. Be, in fact, I, for, for me, what I tell job seekers is just be aware of which organization you want to work for. Oh, because right. when that organization is in your radar, you're always aware when they are vacancies yeah. you will follow them on linkedin follow them on their social media pages mm -hmm. try and get connect when you're in linkedin connect with people who work for those organizations mm -hmm. because somehow you might be able to see when their job openings all right yeah you must if you're a job seeker you 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 must be stay woke you know yeah. stay Just woke. what's <laughs> going on yeah. So, yeah as you stay woke mm. there's something has career stagnation yes and most of the times i don't know if people probably you get in and the terms are so good and you're now comfortable because you feel like i have a good salary and all that and all that but now how do i how do you identify probably that your experience here you're going through mm. uh career stagnation and how can you overcome it or how do you get to deal with it because i believe if you for the time that you're going to be going through this situation of uh, career stagnation it could mm -hmm. also limit your chances of promotions your chances of probably getting more opportunities so how do you deal with that okay one you need to ask yourself why am i stuck mm -hmm. why am i facing stagnation is it because um my organization does not have a way of career progression mm -hmm. because uh, from the organization level even when you're joining an organization you should be able to see how you're going to grow mm -hmm. in your career mm -hmm. at entry level you get in as maybe uh, if again if I'm going to use uh, let me use HR mm -hmm. you're going to be um, a human resource assistant mm -hmm. you need to see how I will grow within the ladder so will I become uh, the next uh, senior HR person? Mm -hmm. How will I grow up to be like the human resource manager? There must be steps like you're growing from this stage to this stage to this to stage other. up to the um, like the most senior position in that uh, organization. In that organization in your area mm -hmm. of specialization, mm -hmm. because if the organization also does not have that, you'll get stuck. Mm -hmm. As a person, if you're not a person who takes initiative, you are going to get stuck. Mm -hmm. Because how will you grow if there are 10 of us doing the same job? If I'm not taking initiative, other people might grow and then I'm still left I'm out. Still left out. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is that also as a person, you must be a lifelong learner. That means you're continuously improving your skills. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're looking, always looking for opportunities to grow and learn. Mm -hmm. Because unless you're learning, you'll not grow. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in fact, the, the core of you growing is by you learning. Mm -hmm. by, upskilling yourself by going back to school reading books or even shadowing somebody you're, you're learning either in terms of skills in terms of how you handle yourself so how do you know you're stuck you're frustrated you're sick and tired of your job you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of you know <laughs> of, of your job yeah then you begin to to know that you're stuck mm. the money can be there but you're not growing and as a human being you're always looking for the next challenge for the next challenge and if you're not getting that next challenge okay it's time to make that move okay yes. as you talk about career stagnation you cannot talk about career uh, career change or yeah. career transition because mm -hmm. sometimes someone will feel like i'm stagnant in this field mm -hmm. and they feel like probably if i challenge myself in a different area that is going to help me out uh, in becoming a better person or growing my career so for someone who's looking at changing uh, careers from one industry to another industry that is something totally 
probably different. Yeah. For example, you're in the media and you feel like, okay, now I think that I, I, I want to still probably practice media and communication, but maybe at a teaching level or mm. as a lecturer, like uh, all that. How do you now prepare yourself for that? And what is the main thing that you're supposed to look out for as you plan on career change? In fact, I think also the place to start is ask yourself, why am I changing my career? Mm -hmm. Is it because maybe you know how you, you could have gone to college because your parents said, uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to go to the University of Nairobi and I wanted to take this course, or the, mm -hmm. your family wants a doctor and a lawyer in their home. And inside and you not, is a DJ who is so passionate about music. <laughs> yes. It happens. <laughs> it's time for you to, <laughs> you need to understand why am I changing? Is it because I am not passionate about what I do, mm -hmm. and sometimes even because of technological uh, changes, yeah. your skills could become more uh, less marketable, so it's harder for you to grow in that regard. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's time for you to consider a career change. Or for, it, there's so many reasons, and also you've got a passion, like you're saying, and that is what I want to pursue now. Mm -hmm. So once you're aware of the reason you're changing, the next thing you need to think about is do your research on the industry that you're moving into. All right. Who are the industry leaders? Mm -hmm. Why have they made it? Do I have what it takes? Mm -hmm. And then you come back and take account of your transferable skills. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to change your career even when you're 50 years, 60 years. Mm -hmm. Some people get their breaks when they are 60 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've no, maybe you've been working, you've never had an opportunity to try at something and voila, you're acting and the next time you're the biggest star. So you need to evaluate your, in terms of what are the transferable skills mm -hmm. that I have now that I can use in my new job. Because many people uh, uh, feel the fear to change their careers thinking in terms of a new many other people have been doing this job. Yeah. What, what will make me successful mm -hmm. what will make you successful are these transferable skills and when I say transferable skills I mean things like leadership skills communication skills those things will set you apart all right so that you go and learn the core skills that are required in the new industry that you want to move into okay yeah. we have very few minutes left but yeah. I want us to deal with to I want you to find a way that you can balance and answer these last two questions. Okay. Um, the impact of networking in yeah. career development, mm -hmm. how much weight does that have okay. on career development? Mm -hmm. And then the other one is how do we track career development? I think that's so that my director does not like uh, come at me. Yeah. So let's uh, do the first one. Okay. Uh, how, what is the impact of good networking in career development? Let me tell you, the truth is, most jobs before they're advertised mm -hmm. people have already circulated within their networks mm -hmm. do you have this type of person we are looking for this type of person mm -hmm. when they don't find that person within those networks it's when now they go and advertise mm -hmm. it, more often than not mm -hmm. as much as it's competitive but First, they find people within their networks Our organization is looking for this type of person mm -hmm. would you be knowing mm -hmm. and then now, when we can't find somebody within our networks, then you, you go advertise. All right. So it is very important for you to network. Don't network for the sake of just networking. Mm -hmm. Network with an objective. Because it's not the number of people you're networking with. It is the quality of your network. Of your network. As they say, your network is your network. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> it has to be within uh, meaningful connections. That's what I say. Oh, right. Not just connections. All right. Yeah. Uh, 30 seconds, yeah. how do you track career development? How do you really tell that my career is growing, it is developing, I can see growth? How do you do that? 30 seconds as we wind up. Okay, how do you know that you're growing is that uh, you are able to do things that you are not able to do before. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see progress, like you're growing from this position to a more senior position, mm -hmm. you're able to do more mm -hmm. than you would have done. Mm -hmm. And then you're also growing as a person you're able to make better decisions mm -hmm. when it comes to that industry as compared to what decisions you'd have made 10 years back. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. That is very, that was very informative to my viewers and to myself. And thank you very much for finding the time to be here with us. And this is what I tell you, you've heard from Leah. 
she's a career coach with a lot of experience it is never late to change mm -hmm. uh, a career if you feel that probably in a certain industry and these are not working out and you feel like you want to challenge yourself go for it and the last one your network is your network so don't just have networks so that you can say oh I know this lecturer I know this banker I know this lawyer have networks that can benefit you and you can also probably impact on your networks thank you very much my name is Patricia Morioki. Drive yourselves a very good night.